Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to actually a sunny morning, which is wonderful because the weather of late has been questionable at best, which is why we haven't done much filming for a while because uh, we've been hopping in and out onto all sorts of different jobs and um, it's been quite difficult to keep track of what we're doing. So rather than boring you to death with tiny little snippets, we've uh, just held off but I'm um, hopefully gonna get a bit of a clean run at some work this morning. So just to update you on where we're at, um, the roof behind me has been completed, which is great. So that means we can carry, crack on with the cladding on the back. Um, and that's what we're doing this morning. There's Gregor, we can see him squeezing behind the scuffle. So we're just finishing up the battening here and we worked out our gauge and we'll go into more detail about the cladding in a minute. We've insulated large parts of this rear roof here. We've insulated out the front. The other job that we've done is just this little bit here, down the side of the house, some steels and some sleepers because of the change of level against the fence. Tied up the side and sorted out the chamber cover ready for the paving at the back. Uh, around the front, we've completed the little roof there and we've got some cladding up, which I'll show you in a minute. But the name of the game really is to get the cladding up, certainly down the side of the house uh, as quickly as possible so we can get rid of the scaffolding. Um, and then we can get access down the side of the house and start cleaning up and tidying up all the landscaping areas and then move on to the driveway, hopefully, before I need to move on to my next job, which just starts in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, we're gonna just hold fire on here for a little bit, um, but we've reached a nice, nice stage where we've got a lot of the external stuff done. So um, that's the plan this morning and the rest of the week. So let's see how we get on. Hey, so a little update, a uh, little rain delay, you can see you've got nasty clouds behind me. Anyway, not sure where that came from. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so um, this is how the clouding works. Buttons on the wall, I think they want 38 mil uh, clearance. These are 45 because they're just three by twos. Um, so it's a bit more, but that's not a problem. And that's for ventilation to get behind the cladding so that there's no moisture build up there and allows it to circulate through. So um, as we do, I'll talk you through what happens at the bottom. There's a, a vent cover strip, which is quite smart. Uh, it's a perforated aluminium angle. Um, but at the top also, we've got to leave it short. And you can see there at the top. So. There'll be uh, like a shadow gap all the way along the top when we fit the cladding over the over the front of these, and um, that just allows the air to circulate in behind it. Um, putting some DPM over the front of these so that I don't really know why. I'll be honest. Um, it's part of the specification. I presume it's to do with condensation and moisture gains the timber, but obviously it's treated timber. And hopefully, if the cladding is doing its job, then there shouldn't really be any need for that. But um, there you go. Nevertheless, um, stapling that on and then. When we go about fixing the cladding, um, we use these clips. Now, because we're using the Seedrill click range rather than their lap range, this is what the, um, the clips look like. So they've got little lugs in two directions. So the large lug fits on top of the cladding and so you can still get the through hole. Then you pin it in with a stainless steel screw and then the bottom of the next piece of cladding clips into the top of that. So they'll be get fixed all the way up. Now, um, it might look a bit higgledy-piggledy in terms of our spacing and whatnot, and that's just because of how we've ended up picking up uh, studs on internally. It's overkill because you only need 600 between each one, according to their specification. We're gonna have more than that, but we also might end up skipping some out where we don't need as much and bridging them to, uh, to economize on clips a little bit and also just because we don't, we don't need to. Um, there are a few things to get over, a little bit like the uh, the thickness of the timber that we've explained before in previous videos, but I think there's a bit of tolerance in the boards actually. They're not super stiff, and just depending on how much you pin the screws back in the clips, gives you a little bit of wiggle room, um, but obviously you don't want them rattling around at all, you want them nice and firm, so um, that's where we're at at the moment. So, patterns on uh, DPM, uh, DPC, over the top of that, you, they specify or that you know they suggest using some um, EPDM strips. But I asked the supplier, they said it's extortionate and the stuff does the same job, so that's what we've gone with. And uh, then we'll start setting up down below, but uh, that's where we are for the minute. <laughs> 
would be the one that hits the scaffold. Just Okay folks, so um, we've got all the DPC on all the battens uh, all fixed up and then we're just starting to deal with the trim down at the bottom. This is the aluminium closure that comes from Seedrill. So that actually then fits, if you can see down here, at the bottom of the run and laps right underneath as a closure. Now obviously um, I've got more space here between the brickwork and the closure. So what I've done is I've used some uh, insect mesh on a roll. Uh, it's black, which is quite nice. So hopefully will give us a good shadow closure. We have fitted that all the way along. I don't know whether you can see under there, all the way to the end. So we fold, turned it in, uh, round the back, underneath, and then round the front as well. And so it just gets pinched nicely as we fix these. Now, these are the screws they get supplied with the clips, uh, which are stainless steel, and they've got like a super, super flat head. I don't know whether the camera's picking that up, um, which is nice, it's low profile. But yeah, just gonna run that all the way along here, and we'll put the corner profile on the corner, and then we can start running some, some boards on. Um, so Yesterday afternoon was seriously wet, so uh, we pulled off and we didn't get anything else done. So we've got back on it this morning, and I'll just show you what we've been up to. We fitted the starter trim. Um, which has got a little lip to accept the first row of cladding and we've just fitted the the corner trim Over there, which I hope you can see There you go. There's the first first board in the bottom all nice and level, which is great and That just slots in nicely over that starter trim and then you can see here Those are how the clips fit so we've got one clip over the top whoop, of the bottom board and these two little lugs will accept the um, the bottom of the next board, so they're not stuck on top of each other and be fastened all the way up. So we'll put those clips on all the all the uprights as we go. And now it's just a case of stacking them up. Hopefully, apart from weaving in and out of the scaffolding, we should make some good progress. So let's see how we get on. progress here so got quite a lot of this up a few little things uh, you've got to keep an eye on when you're fitting it using the clips make sure they're all seated down completely on top of the boards um, and obviously we're dealing with a bit of discrepancy in the thickness of, of the, the battens actually on the wall so when they some are a bit thicker than others it's just kicking it out and making it maybe a little tricky to seat some of the cladding but overall not doing too badly but we've come to trimming out the center window here so the process when you've got a window here, when you've got cladding carrying on up above it, is that you need to fit the spend strip again, the cover strip underneath, um, to allow airflow sort of in front of the window, up and, and over the top. Where you're up to a soffit, it doesn't really matter, like we've got at the front of the house and at the back. So this will fit in the top. And then obviously you need to be able to start the cladding again on top of that. So this is the profile that you get to start again essentially over the top of the window so if you can imagine we'll have the batten on the wall like that and then this new starter profile will sit over the top of that like that so that it can pick up the board it doesn't matter whether it's uh, a tongue or whether it's a cut edge it'll slot in there and start again so that'll sit over the top of the window uh, and obviously we need two corner profiles on either side of the window. So what's a little bit odd is that there's no proprietary fixing or clip or anything to connect this angle to the corner strip. So you've actually got to fashion a little cutout on your own. Um, now the way I've done that is I've just cut a little strip off the end so I can use that for marking on the side of the profile. And then I've traced that I've used a mixture of, uh, of a hacksaw, um, some snips, and these are really good for cutting all the aluminium, and, uh, and a couple of files uh, to, it's got a rounded profile. So I've got a, a rounded file, although it's very aggressive and probably not quite the right sort of job. Um, and then this does a, does a really good job, it's a finer file, really good, because it's aluminium, 
pretty pretty good at uh, just being able to work through it gently and kind of slowly. So um, what we've ended up doing is scribing it on here and then uh, I don't know whether you can actually see the kind of profile that's cut out over the top of that so that when that slips in there it'll fit flush over the top and act as a bit of a drip edge. So that's what we've ended up with. Um, they don't Procedural don't give you any guidance on how to achieve that. So um, if anybody's got any any better ideas than I do about how to achieve that, it'd be good to know for next time. But I think it'll do the job. So what I've done is I've cut that profile on each end of a long strip so that I can measure down from that and then cut the bottom square. Far more difficult and a bit of a gamble to cut that first and then try and cut that end. Because if you got it wrong, you waste the whole strip. This way, I've cut that in, made sure that's right That's right first, then I can measure that, trim it down, and it should fit all okay. So let's see how we get on with fitting it. Okay, folks, there's the uh, the end result. So just about see that's cut around at the top. So that's the same length as the profile at the side. Let's see the vent strips in, we'll run some silicon up against the window, and then there'll be a little filler strip of the same cladding that'll fit in here. I've got to grab your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we'll bring the cladding from the front up to there. We'll cut it under here. Leave at least 10 mil underneath for ventilation through this sp space. And then, again, we'll run the cladding from the corner up to that edge. So, yeah, should be neat enough. So there you go folks, that's um, this side wrapped up. Got all the cladding all the way up to the ridge. Yeah, all went okay. And then we've just trimmed out the, the window to finish up, which looks a bit like this. So cut a, a little strip, of the same material to fit in there. Use the color coded screws to fix it through the profile into the, uh, the battening, into the studs we've put on. And uh, we've just used a, I don't know whether you can see right in there. Just use an EPDM strip, so a little rubber strip to seal up against the window. So, looking tidy. And there's the side of the house, and there's the window from below, which you can see trimmed up. So, look all the way up the side, up to the soffits that we did a little while ago. Neat and tidy. Pretty good all round. Nice product. And we're getting cracking on the back, so we'll see you there. Hey, morning everyone. Welcome to a beautiful day. It's about time. Look at sunshine, blue sky, happy days. So, um, this is where we got to. Finished up here and this morning, finished down there and cleaned up all the gutter in, cleaned the windows off. So we're looking tidy and we've just Greg's just finishing off putting the downspout on the guttering, ready for the scaffold to come down. And that'll be really great. So we're going to see our handiwork properly, get a bit more space, start tidying up. So um, yeah, really, really nice stage to get to. And then we'll start hitting the front of the house, looking at the cladding at the front and the roof in bits and pieces. So yeah, good times. So there's the, uh, the finished product up here. So, Nice clean soffits, giving everything a wash down, cleaned the uh, the guttering and the fascias and soffit there. Not a bad result, pretty pretty pleased with how things have turned out all together. So be quite exciting to get the scaffold down and see what we're left with. 